Welcome back to Dare to Call Him Friend. It's been a while, I know. But today, we're going to talk about the fact that God doesn't need his ego to be stroked. He's quite secure in himself. And we're also going to talk about the Lord's Prayer, which really should be called either the Disciples' Prayer or simply the Our Father, because Jesus used this prayer as a model to give his disciples to teach them how they should pray. Jesus, for example, one line in the Our Father says, forgive us our trespasses. Well, Jesus never sinned. He didn't need forgiveness for anything. So anyhow, that's one little point. But here's a second one. You know at the end of the Our Father, after it says, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. You know that last bit? For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Did you know that that isn't in the Bible, that particular line? Go back and look for yourself. It wasn't, it was not in the modern Bibles that we use today. However, that line was added by the first and second century Christians. They're not quite sure the exact time that that was done, but it was written for a purpose, and I'm glad that they put it there because I've always loved that line. Even as a small little kid, when I learned that prayer in school, I went through the Catholic school system. I just loved that little bit of the line. After all, why shouldn't I tell God how great he is, how glorious he is, and how all kingdoms need to bow to his name? I mean, that was a given. But I also kind of had this childish little manipulative thought that, you know, I needed to keep in God's book. So if I complimented him enough, then he would know that I knew that he was a boss and I wasn't, but I still might have an inside edge. Now, I have to further admit, there have been times as an adult where I have subconsciously thought along the same lines as that little child. If I praise God enough, if I enter into worship more intensely, if I fast, if I do this, if I do that, then, you know, maybe God will give me what I want. Maybe if I really clean up my act and am on my best behavior, if I make sure I tell God how great and wonderful he is, you know, maybe I'll have an inside edge. Such childish behavior is nothing more than manipulation. An earthly parent can see right through it when their children suddenly become little angels who come up and give them kisses and hugs. Oh, I love you, mommy. I love you, daddy. But the parent's inner radar knows either the child wants something or they did something and they don't want me to find out. We need to lay aside such childish behaviors. One Sunday, quite a few years ago, we were singing in the church I attended a contemporary version of the Our Father and the repetitive chorus went along the lines of, for yours is the kingdom, yours is the power, and yours is the glory forever and ever, amen. And we sang that again and again, and I could feel, you know, sometimes you just know God is on something. And I just slowly became quiet because I felt God wanted my attention, and sure enough, I felt a question in my spirit. Do you think my ego needs stroking? Taken aback, I cleared my throat. Uh, excuse me, Lord? He drew my attention to what I had just been singing repeatedly and repeatedly and repeatedly. Why do you think the word for is at the beginning of that sentence? But after a moment's pause, I admitted sheepishly, um, I don't know. 
why is the word for there? And immediately in my mind's eye, I saw the word for, and immediately above it was in red ink because. Now I knew that the word for and because can be used interchangeably. The word for can be used as a causal word, I guess you could say, in the same way that because is. So anyhow, I muttered the Lord's Prayer under my breath once again, and as I did, I replaced the word for with the word because, and I immediately knew the point he was trying to make. Because the kingdom is his. He has more than enough in his storehouse to give me my daily bread. Because the power is his, he is more than able to keep me from temptation. Because the glory is his, and that glory was won through Jesus Christ, through his death and resurrection, he is more than able to forgive me my sins as I forgive the sins of others. I pray the Our Father, I pray the prayer Jesus gave me out of a realization I am praying to my heavenly Papa, who is the creator of the universe and who loves me and always has my best in his mind. God doesn't need my worship to validate his worth. He is pretty secure in who he is. After all, he is the creator of the universe. So why does he call us to worship? Well, there's two reasons. Worship draws us into relationship with him. We remember who he is, and he reminds us who we are. And another aspect of it is I remember, and as I think upon God's character and his capabilities and the things he's done in the past, my faith and trust in him begins to grow, which allows that little seed of faith, the size of a mustard seed, to grow in fertile soil of trust. As I focus on his attributes, his goodness, his power, his name, and his mercy, all the crises that were threatening to overwhelm me and overshadow me suddenly become incy-wincy even smaller than a mustard seed in comparison to his never-ending power and his unfathomable and unquenching love towards me. So today, say the Our Father. And as you pray those petitions in the Our Father, do so under the realization that God is more than able to do all that you could possibly think or ask or pray.